Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We've talked about civil asset forfeiture before, and there's a bunch of different ways that the situation can arise. Civil asset forfeiture oftentimes is simply the police encountering you and discovering you've got something on you of value, and they take it from you and say, we think that this is some other proceeds of a crime, therefore we're going to keep it, and if you want it, you got to sue us to get it back. And that's a problem. But there are also situations where there's asset forfeiture that's tied to a crime. And now most people will say it kind of makes sense that if you commit a crime using something, they can take that thing from you as, as part of the prosecution of the crime. But there are also strange situations that arise. And in particular in Michigan, it often involves automobiles. If you're driving an automobile under certain circumstances, i.e. when you are committing a crime, they'll often seize your automobile. But the question becomes, is there a process to do that? And, and, and how does that process work? And recently a case made it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court on behalf of a man in Michigan who'd lost his vehicle in a situation like this. And it's kind of strange because some people are going to say, well, Steve, he kind of deserved what happened to him. Except that the way it played out, I think most people would agree was wrong. So the Michigan Civil Forfeiture Appeal declined by the U.S. Supreme Court, but underlying problems still remains. Robert Carter wrote this for the Competitive Enterprise Institute. That's the article I'm going to read to you. But I can tell you, I double-checked. I read the case. It was something like 38 pages long, so a summary is in order. But um, in July of 2015, a man named Nichols presented a counterfeit insurance certificate during a traffic stop in Lincoln Park, Michigan. So gets pulled over. Driver's license, registration, proof of insurance, and he hands over documents, and the proof of insurance was apparently counterfeit. He was not arrested or charged with a crime, and he later pled guilty to the civil infraction of operating a vehicle without proof of insurance. So there were no criminal charges, but the Lincoln Park Police confiscated his vehicle for its involvement in a violation of the Michigan Identity Theft Protection Act, MITPA, which is a criminal statute that contains a forfeiture provision. So apparently there's this statute in the books that says that, in essence, using false documents can result in a criminal claim against you. And in that case, they can seek the forfeiture of stuff you're using in pursuance. (laughs) Pursuance? Pursuit. I'm over-conjugating. I'm conjugating. Pursuant to Michigan compiled laws... 445.79 B1C, the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office was required to promptly institute forfeiture proceedings regarding the vehicle. Consistent with 445.79 B1, the Prosecutor's Office notified Nichols of the seizure, which he knew about because they took his truck, its intent to forfeit the property, and that it would be forfeited if he failed to contest the action within 20 days of receiving notice. So they said, we've got your truck, we're going to keep your truck. We're going to institute proceedings against your truck. And if you don't like that, you got 20 days to respond. So he responded. Now, here's the thing. He filed a timely claim of interest and posted a bond as required by law. So the law says if you want to respond, you can fight this, but you got to post a bond. So he did that. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office should have scheduled a forfeiture hearing, but didn't bother to do it. And they decided they weren't going to pursue it. So they decided not to pursue it. It, however, failed to notify the Lincoln Park Police Department or Mr. Nichols of the decision, which left his car in judicial limbo, which, generally speaking, is a storage lot someplace in Wayne County. (laughs) Nichols could not sue for the return of his car because the statute specifically says property taken or detained under this act is not subject to an action to recover personal property. So once they say, we've taken your property under this act, all you can do is go through the process of having the forfeiture hearing, fighting it, and seeing what happens. Well, three years went by. Three years went by with the guy's truck in limbo, which is the lot in Wayne County. After three years without any progress, Nichols filed a federal suit against the city of Lincoln Park and Wayne County. He sought to recover the car and other damages under a USC 1983 claim. Okay? Federal claim. On the theory that municipalities failed to provide constitutional due process to recover his property. Remember, due process is a really low standard. 
you got to have notice of what's happening and an opportunity to be heard. So he says, look, nothing happened. By definition, that's not due process, right? Three years. His car is sitting in a storage lot for three years. No one's doing anything. It's just sitting there. He argued that he was entitled to a pre-forfeiture hearing to contest the detention of his vehicle while the litigation was pending. And he argued that Wayne County engaged in a policy practice, custom, or pattern of not providing the hearings. So he filed this action in the Eastern District of Michigan in 2018. 2018. Okay, three years ago. Three years ago. The district court found that the city of Lincoln Park and Wayne County did not routinely provide post-deprivation pre-forfeiture hearings for civil seizures, and that the failure to provide such a hearing did not violate due process. In consequence, they dismissed his action. District court said, well, doesn't happen a lot, so tell you what, we're just going to dismiss your case. He appealed his case to the Sixth Circuit, where a divided panel noted that he made his 1983 claim against the cities themselves, or the county and the city, and not the unnamed county prosecutor who failed to institute forfeiture proceedings in the case. Therefore, he could only prevail if he suffered a deprivation of rights directly caused by municipal policy or custom, which has to do with case law, and it's very confusing. But they're almost suggesting he should have sued the prosecutor. And most people would say, wait, (laughs) sue the prosecutor? So the majority found that City of Lincoln Park and Wayne County did not engage in such a pattern Therefore, he's got no viable 1983 claim. In consequence, the lower court's dismissal was affirmed. But meanwhile, I have to tell you that when he did file his lawsuit, they said, okay, you can have your truck back. So he got his truck back after three years, but he wanted to pursue his claim because he wanted a ruling from the court saying that what they did was wrong, and he wanted to be somehow compensated for the fact they kept his vehicle for three years. Because... The law says you seize the vehicle, you send the notice, you have a hearing. Well, they seized the vehicle, sent the notice, and just never had a hearing. Three years. Three years. On June 1st, 2021, the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear uh, the case, and they denied the petition for certiorari without comment. Uh, Legal arguments aside, the fact that the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office held Nichols' car for three years after they decided not to proceed with the hearing, seems a little strange, doesn't it? He was unable to recover his vehicle until he filed his lawsuit because the Michigan legislature failed to set a deadline for the government to act or establish procedures to allow property owners to recover the property when the government fails to act. So the statute actually says you must have a hearing, period. doesn't say when. So they can literally never have a hearing and, and, and when you complain, they go, oh, we just haven't scheduled it yet. We'll have one somewhere down the road. Because uh, Wayne County Prosecutor's Office had already determined it would not pursue a forfeiture action, the Mid- Michigan legislature needs to address the larger questions regarding the equity of civil forfeitures and the sources of police funding, because a lot of these uh, vehicles that get forfeited under these statutes, they get auctioned off and the money then goes to the police departments. So... Uh, the Competitive Enterprise Institute is saying that um, the legislature in Michigan should amend the MITPA statute to ensure that owners can bring suit to recover their property when the government fails to act promptly. This will ensure that cases like Nichols's do not happen again. So all they got to do is one of two things. Either amend the statute to allow the lawsuit where you can sue them to get your vehicle back and hash it out in that lawsuit. Or put a deadline and simply say, you seize a vehicle, you send the notice. They get 21, 20 days to respond. And then from that response or the 20 days running, you have 180 days to, to bring an action. 91 days to bring an action. Pick, pick some number. There's a bunch of numbers the courts seem to like. Pick one of those numbers and say, you must bring the action within this time frame, or you got to give the car back. That's That's simple. This appears to be a case where the Michigan legislature drafting a statute didn't think this one all the way through. And it's it's a very simple fix, but it's obviously a very, very big problem. And again, 
I'm I'm with you if you're going to say, but Steve, the guy handed a fake proof of insurance to a cop. He broke the law. Yeah, he did. He pled guilty to it also. Got punished for it. Pled responsible. I guess it's a civil infraction. But the point is that, yeah, he did something wrong. But is part of his penalty appropriate to be, we're going to keep your vehicle for three years. So you can, you, you're free to go. We're going to keep your vehicle for three years. That's stupid. It's obviously stupid. So the law needs to be fixed. But this is just another great example of how a civil forfeiture can happen in such a weird way. And again, if it didn't happen to you, it didn't happen to me. We don't stop to think about this, but it could. It could. So uh, not that I'm going to be handing a fake proof of insurance to a cop anytime soon, and I doubt you will either, but you'd be surprised how these things often play out. So it's from the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Robert Carter wrote it. And um, like I said, it's a strange case. The U.S. Supreme Court refused to hear it, but the man was without his vehicle for three years because the statute in Michigan says they can seize your vehicle and have a hearing. just doesn't say when. So the Michigan Civil Forfeiture Appeal declined by the U.S. Supreme Court, but underlying problem remains. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night.